Okay, we do consent to being live streamed. Please hit got it if you all got that message. I'm on a mute. Thank you being live stream. And you can stop. All right, sorry about that. I was trying to, I still have messages over here going on. All right, you doing all right today, Ms. Polk? I am, I am, how about you? I'm doing well. So I, I just wanna introduce myself first and foremost to everyone that's on or that's watching via the live stream. So first and foremost, I'm Aaliyah Davis. Um, my husband and I, and along with our two sons, we recently relocated from Jackson, Mississippi to Atlanta, Georgia. And when I heard that my pastor, Reverend Charles Polk Jr., is a candidate for moderator of the Jackson District, you know, I just wanted to do my part um, in helping people better understand exactly who he is. So I've just, I've jumped on here today uh, to talk to the one person that I know that knows him best, and that's you, none other than Lady Polk, Miss Jackie, or only lady, as pastor says. Um, so we're going to just dive right in. So you told me you're doing well. So let's let's just jump into it let's jump into it let's jump in i miss you though you javon and the boys you know we miss you we love you we send you yes. love over the miles yes man we miss you guys as well of course so um just full disclosure um before i get started i do want you to know that i've invited a few people uh extra people here who uh just wanted I to see in on our chat and so is that okay see. with you that's the more the merrier <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let me just make sure I'm understanding, right? A okay. Baptist district moderator has the responsibility for a group of churches in a geographical area. Is that correct? That's right. But but it's different from other denominations. Um, local okay. Baptist churches under the National Baptist Convention are autonomous. You know, they select their own pastors, they have their own bylaws and practices, but they operate with the, the same basic tenets of the faith. And so a moderator is a pastor from a member church in that district and has been elected by folks in that district to provide leadership, uh, maintain a vision for the district. Also make sure that there's the right linkage between the church community and civic communities, et cetera. Um, did that help? That helps. So, so basically, this isn't about picking, you know, the singing preacher, the hooping preacher, the which who pre what preacher can preach the best, or who does the most hospital visits. No, no, it's nothing like that. It is not okay. that at all. Thankfully, they already right. have their pastors. This is not about getting their old pastor. Got you. So, so this is more so about leadership. You know actually leading leaders it's leading leaders and so you know i kind of look at it this way i think the best moderators look upward because they defend the faith i think mm -hmm. they look inward to make sure each of the churches in that district is as strong as it can be and then they look outward because they have to impact the community if if you're fully operational you're going to impact the community so that's how i look at it and it's being a visionary though that leads through influence mm -hmm. not through force and might you lead through influence and you lead through listening and you lead to get results and and maybe situational leadership skills too you know because needs differ Absolutely. within each district correctly it does. It does. Plus change leadership because, you know, the right change just doesn't happen on its own. Right. You know, that's a lot. That, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Well, Aaliyah, if, you know, if a district wants to accomplish a lot, it takes a lot. That makes all the sense right there. So, you know, what can you share about Pastor Polk to help people see, you know, just what he brings to this role? Well, I've been and knowing him for a little bit. You know, I'm from Ohio and I met Charles at college. 
in Michigan the first day as a college freshman. I had no idea that that uh, cute basketball player with the Southern draw was who God had created just for me. And so when I look back on our journey, our wonderful children, our three wonderful granddaughters, I look at the churches that God placed us in for our growth and for us to be a blessing. I look at our career success in the tough world of global business. For me, a constant stands out. I've been given a strong and decisive man who can point the way, but walk by my side as we get to that point. And that's part of our magic, Ali. It's been working for it's been working for a little while. Um, but not only that, it's part of his leadership style. Kind of can see a vision of the future, see a direction to walk towards, but he's getting there walking right by everyone's side. Is it's not being out in front, it's walking by their side. And and that's work that's worked. That's great. So so what about his journey? Can you tell us a little bit about his journey as a leader? Well, Charles started out in supervision in his early 20s as a co-op student in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. So imagine the challenge of directing 40 and 50 year old people who don't want to be told what to do anyway, but certainly Mm -hmm. not by a 20 year old kid in their eyes from Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, They taught him. (laughs) They taught him a lot. Um, But he earned their respect. And, you know, he went on from those experiences in supervision on to engineering management and later into running a a global business. And each step of the way, he learned to embrace big challenges and to involve everybody in solving them. And so how do you do that, though? How do you do that? How do you accomplish that? Well, I'll tell you how I've observed him to accomplish, he looks across the organization. Mm -hmm. He's not just looking at, you know, those on my staff, those in my chain of command, and certainly not just those who agree with me. Right. Because great ideas come from, you, you, you have to do the look across. And with teams around the world, he successfully brought together people, some of whom didn't get along at all, but he brought together people with various strengths, various opinions, got them to coalesce around common goals, and they got results. Got you. You know, so um, what you're talking about as far as his journey, you know, in the corporate world, in the global world, um, and I'm sure there are people on here wondering, or like I said, you know, just maybe thinking, you know, how does he correlate that or how does he apply that leadership to the church? Does I don't see how it doesn't. Yeah, it, you know, it it applies because uh, what we learn from our experiences, mm-hmm. we take with us, right? right? It's the lessons that we learn, the skills that we hone from our experiences, we bring with us into every context we're involved with. So yeah, it applies. And I think that's part of what God does. He knows what experiences to place us in because yes. he's later going to get the glory from it if we let it. That's get right. the glory from. He definitely knows what, what experiences and places to put us in. And so, you know, as you're talking, I'm, I'm thinking, going biblical, I'm thinking about, you know, Moses and his palace experience and how that helped him lead God's people out of Egypt. So exactly. that, that's a statement right there. It, exactly. God knows what experience you're going to need, even when you don't see how it applies. I mean, God gets right. it. And, um, And I would have to tell you, when I look at all of the pastors that we've served under, um, each appreciated his leadership, his knowledge, and his professional perspective. Um, You know, he he served in different capacities. He was a a deacon at two different churches. He was an associate minister at two different churches. He uh, was the Bible class instructor. He led men's ministries. He led capital campaigns to support church growth. Each of those pastors 
put him in roles. Some of them were messy <laughs> and mm. were difficult, but they put him in those assignments because they knew that his approach would be first uh, to approach it in prayer. And then secondly, to step back and assess strengths and look for opportunities. And build consensus. Yeah, consensus for action. Now, mm -hmm. he's not the guy for sitting around talking and yeah. it not, you know, lead to action. It's consensus for action leading to results. Got you. You know, um, I don't mean to pry, but I saw him on a scooter recently. And so how's he doing since his spine surgery? You know, that's a... That's a fair question. Um, for those who don't know, three years ago, uh, Charles had a debilitating spinal condition and uh, to the point that they told him he would be paralyzed and mm. wheelchair bound. And I'm just so grateful that God led us to skillful surgeons that went in and they rebuilt, reconstructed his spinal column. And so his spine is fine today. But, you know, he didn't regain all of his muscle memory. So the scooter and the walker, they help. Great, great, great. So, I mean, I, I guess it's safe to say that my pastor, he's up for the challenge. Yeah, yeah, he is. Okay, let me, let me remind you of when he was at Brooks Rehabilitation Hospital in Florida. Mm -hmm. And he convinced them that taking him to the chapel and having him stand at the podium was as therapeutic as him standing in the exercise room. Yeah, I know where this is going. <laughs> okay, you remember that? You remember yeah. that? And so yeah. I'm like going, what is he doing? What is he doing? No, he gets them to take him. They take him up to the podium. The goal is to stand unassisted for 10 minutes. He gives the therapist, his iPad, asked her to press record, and he recorded a 10-minute Bible mm -hmm. class lesson yep. there in Brooks Rehabilitation Hospital. Yep, I remember that. <laughs> he was an inpatient. He was an inpatient, yes. for goodness sakes. <laughs> so he's definitely up for it. So, so what did you think, you know, what did you think when he told you that he wanted to run for this office position? Seriously? Yes. What, do, what was your thoughts? That's what I said. Seriously? Oh. <laughs> in, in what spare time? But you know what, yeah. Aaliyah? His why for the role caused me to change my view of what the district actually is. Oh, really? So how, how so? How's that? Well, you know, for him... The district isn't a set of duties and responsibilities. It's not mm -hmm. a, a spot on an org chart. It's the heartbeat of the National Baptist Convention. And, and he believes that and operates uh, with that philosophy because it's at the point where the local church, the pastor, the congregation are sharing the gospel and changing lives. That's... That's the most important point of impact. And the state and the national provide excellent resources, but their effectiveness rises and falls on how it's used at the local level. And so for mm. him, the, the district is where pastors care about other pastors, where congregations care about other congregations. They share their strengths. And they come together as a body of believers that has real impact. That's that for him is. And and when he described it that way, I kind of got excited too. Yeah, because I mean, you know, I guess I've always thought of the district as a host for events, you know, summer revival, classes and meetings. But you know, that that right there, that that's what it's all about. And and that's exciting. That is that should get everyone excited. Exactly, exactly. And he, yeah, he convinced, he convinced me. I think it's, I think it's great. And, and I like it that he's got the leadership set for it. You know, yes. he's got, he's amassed the tools and the skills to, you know, revitalize the district. 
That's awesome. Well, this this has been great. Um, it's very been very informative and very fun, you know, just to for me to learn more about this role because, like I said, you know, when I've thought of it, I've always thought about just events. And then for a person like my pastor to step into this role to really revitalize it as we as we speak of, that's a game changer. And that's that's needed. That is very much so needed. And so um, I guess just in closing, do you have any closing comments or things you well, would like to two say? Things. There's two things I would say when I say revitalize and, you know, sometimes people, you know, view that as a, a negative word. Revitalizing yeah. is exciting. That and frankly, every pastor has been revitalizing their church since yeah. we got through this pandemic. That's right. Um, revitalizing is what you look forward to. You build upon all the hard work that the people who've held this job before, you know, they've maintained it, they've hung in there, they contributed their best. And so it's building from that foundation and allowing God to lead you forward because right. God always pushes us forward. He does. He, he absolutely does. And like the scripture says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Can you not see it? So, so this is something new. <laughs> The need to revitalize, I mean, it isn't a critique. It's, it's something to get excited about. It's something that we should be in expectation of. That's right. It, there, there's no negatives there. And um, Jesus is all about greater works, right? Yes. We're yes. supposed yes. to come right. in and each one reach somebody to have them lift you to go to the next higher level. And so I, I think that that's an important point. And, and it's a great one. And and the way Charles talks about it, he looks at the district. The district is blessed with great churches, outstanding yeah. pastors, preacher pastors. God has blessed us with massive potential. It's mm -hmm. having the leadership to pull it all together, get people on the same page, walking down uh, the same path, and really having impact. You know, I, I would tell you that we have two great family men that are both serving the body of Christ well, that are running as candidates. And I think that's a great thing. Um, both of them are positioned to get support at the state and the national levels as they should. That's a great thing. I know that Charles has the leadership tools, the skills, and the vision to move to that next step. And um, yeah, that's what we're excited about. Yeah, uh, and and I am biased, you know, so I know my pastor has what it takes uh, to to definitely move the district forward and to to revitalize and, and do a new thing uh, through Christ. So I'm excited. Um, and in and, and closing, um, like, I, like I mentioned before, I do have some other guests on that are going to just kind of contribute to this topic and tell us more about what Pastor Polk um, has, has done for them or the impact that he's made in their lives. But before I do that, I do want to um, let everyone know that's watching that uh, first and foremost, our pastor, Pastor Charles Polk Jr., he will be preaching tomorrow at Cherry Grove Baptist Church. Um, that's at 7 p.m. And that's the, uh, actually, that's the opening of the district convention. So if you are um, available, if you can, please go out, please support him. Um, and you can you can see firsthand of, of who this amazing man of God is. Um, and then second, and Aaliyah, Aaliyah, let me clarify one thing. Um, not preaching, he oh. will have, I think each of the candidates will have a 10 minute opportunity to kind of share their vision. So he will be there and it's at seven, but it's part of um, um, both having 10 minutes to talk about what they bring. Okay. And yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Sorry. Well, no, after no, you hear no. him, you're going to want to you you're going to want to hear him preach. He's 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 excellent, excellent teacher. But um, secondly, um, the election is Monday. Um, that's October 30th, uh, from 6:30 to 7:30 p.m. at New Mac Raven Hill Baptist Church, and that's in Jackson, Mississippi. So please go out to the polls. Please cast your votes, and um, I'm just going to put it out there again. Vote. Reverend Charles Pope Jr. All right. Um, so without further ado, we, 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 appreciate, we, we appreciate everyone's prayers and we yeah. appreciate your support. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So thank you again. Who do you have on here? All right. So I have a few people on here, actually. And so all I'm asking is that um, when you're ready, just 
put your video on, unmute yourself and just take us away. You can start off by stating your name and then just give us two to three sentences about, you know, like I said, what pastor has done for you, the impact he's made in your life, um, something, just anything that you would like to share personally about our pastor, okay? So we can just get started. Whoever wants to go first, that would be great. Um, I know we're okay, all- Okay, so they're gonna be opening up, uh, turning on their videos, okay? Can we go now? Oh, wow, you've got quite, there are quite a few, okay. Yes. Hello. Hey, my name is Barry Dixon. I am the chairman of the Deacon Board here at St. Luther Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, pastor Pope is not only my pastor, uh, he's my friend, and he's my fraternity member, a uh, member of the Cap Apple Slide Fraternity Incorporated. And one of our mottos as a fraternity is achievement in every field of human endeavor. And pastor has achieved so much. Uh, just looking back over all the things he's done in his leadership, you know, he pushes us beyond who we've been. And so he keeps us moving forward. So thank you, Pastor, for your leadership. Awesome. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Uh, who's next? I'm seeing some faces. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Tabitha from Detroit, Michigan. Um, honored sister. to be here with you. Yes, that is my beautiful sister there. And Charles Pope, Reverend Pope, is my brother. Grafted in um, in the body of Christ, but we have became family. Um, what I want to share about Pastor Polk and uh, Lady Jackie Polk, um, they are intrinsically tied to kingdom building. Um, it's not just a uh, church building work. It is a life work for them. Um, and that's what I most appreciate. We are here in Detroit. He is one who values relationships far more than contracts and money. Um, he has valued relationships and building them and established them to the point that the body of Christ can be blessed. Uh, up to and including uh, when he relocated to Mississippi, um, he kept relationships here in Detroit, not just with me, but with clergy throughout the city. We met at Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, uh, where the Reverend Dr. S.L. Jones, who is from Hazelhurst, Mississippi, um, right. was the pastor, and uh, was a very leading voice in the nation. And it was our humble honor and privilege to serve under him and to glean and to learn. But Pastor Polk being there uh, created many relationships throughout the city, one with my current pastor, Bishop Edgar Van. And maintaining that relationship when the water crisis happened for Jackson, Mississippi, that forged relationship brought about us being able to deliver relief and help to the citizens of Jackson by sending three semis down loaded with water to assist. And we had all confidence, all trust, all assurance that the people would be blessed, that um, whatever else was needed, we had a portal and a bridge by which to get the help needed to be who God has called us to be, the body of Christ. And it didn't matter about length, breadth, miles. We are to be help and agents to our sisters and brothers in Christ. So it was our honor to help, to assist. And we were grateful to have a Pastor Polk in Jackson, Mississippi, to make that happen. And so I'm just grateful for this next level, for this next opportunity. Um, as all of us who are called in ministry, we're called to the gracious work of Calvary. Um, and it comes with great sacrifice. It comes with great pain, but it also comes with great reward. And so for that, I'm grateful that my brother is stepping up, stepping in, but also stepping in the light for God that he can raise him, elevate him, and use him for a more far and large work for the body of Christ. Thanks for allowing me to share today. Absolutely. That was great. Thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is uh, Harold Polk. Uh, Pastor Charles Polk Jr. has been my brother of more than 60 years, and I believe that gives me a little bit of credibility uh, when I say that he is a man uh, that can be trusted. Grew up in the household with him, have uh, experienced uh, his growth and his leadership, and so trust me when I say uh, I think that the very most critical character that you could want in a leader is that they can be trusted, and that's something that I can say about my brother. And I really wouldn't say it just because he's my brother, but I've just had that experience over the last 60 years that if he says he's going to do something, you can believe him. So we just thank you all for listening and God bless. That's great. Trust is definitely key. 
Adventurous. <laughs> Hello, my name is uh, Pastor Greg White from uh, Seven Star Mission Every Baptist Church in uh, Utica, Mississippi. Uh, and I've had the distinct pleasure of serving uh, on the Pastor Charles Pope leadership as an associate minister at St. Luther. Uh, and I can truly say, as the scriptures say, that iron sharpens iron. Uh, and we all know that many times those of us that are in leadership, it's hard for us to listen uh, sometimes because we think we know all the answers or we think that we know a better way. Uh, but one thing I can tell about Pastor Charles Polk Jr. is that he directly uh, uh, leads and guides in a way that will show you that sometime when you err, or sometimes you're out of the way. So he has truly helped me uh, as a pastor uh, navigate areas and navigate things in my life uh, and pastor in a church uh, that I may not understand. And so, and so pastors need pastors that will help them understand uh, what direction they need to go in as it relates to godly wisdom and godly counsel. Uh, so I think Pastor Pope exhibits uh, that uh, he corrects with love, uh, he's compassionate, but he will correct you. Uh, and he's uh, firm with his correction, but he's fair with his correction. So uh, I think that Pastor Pope will be a dynamic uh, leader uh, to lead pastors uh, because uh, pastors need leading as well. We need to sharpen each other. So I, I, uh, I'm excited about this next venture uh, for him, uh, not just for him, but either one of the candidates. So I, I just pray God's blessings upon both of them. Great. Great. This is Ama. Ega, Ega, Ega. I'm Mary Polk and Amos Polk. Our I'm nephew, Pastor, Pastor Charles Polk Jr., Jr. Jr. took on a huge chance of following in his father's footsteps. He came in as his own man, focused and, and teaching the word and, and being his father's vision to life. He has made us very proud. Thank you, Pastor. We love you. All right, who's next? Who's next? I'm gonna go, go if I can. I got a right. little one in the back that's fussing, so I'm gonna try to get off. <laughs> uh, so I am uh, Charles Polk III. Uh, you know, Pastor Polk is my father. And so uh, just, I could probably talk about everything, you know, about what he means to me uh, for a long time. But if we're just a limited to leadership, to me, when I think of a leader, uh, I need to see someone that leads by example and not by words. And so uh, throughout my entire walk in life, uh, I can 100% point to moments that I've done things simply based off of what I've seen my father do. Um, ways that I've seen him move and handle life, handle adversity, uh, handle challenges, and still always maintain the ability to put God first, his family second, and all of his responsibilities ahead of himself. Uh, and so it's still the walk that I find myself trying to follow. Uh, so I'm still following in his footsteps. And so I still, you know, love to even hear about this opportunity because this is something else that lets me know that it is, I should also be challenging myself and, and stepping out, right? So uh, I am so excited and so happy that he is continuing to push. Uh, and I hope that uh, he is able to do so in this position. Thank you all. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Um, Hi. Uh, my I'm name is... Oh, you go ahead. Okay. Hey, my name is Alana Dixon, and I'm part of the interpretive dance ministry. Um, I sing in the choir, and I'm also a junior nurse. And to me, Pastor, he is a mentor to us. Um, he supports the youth as well as today and tomorrow. He supports and challenges us, gives us opportunities to serve. And he knows many jokes, but he just doesn't know a lot. <laughs> but yeah, he's a um, 
great person, and I feel that he'd be the right man for the position. Thank you, Lana. <laughs> okay, now I'll go. Hi, my name's Tammy, Tammy Britton, and I have been blessed to be Charles and Jackie Polk's goddaughter since my birth, probably. Uh, some few, just a few years ago, not that long. It, it, it's just a little bit ago. Uh, so um, I have been blessed to have both of them, dad especially, just um, show me what a huge, wonderful example of how it looks to walk with God and, and lead a God purpose life. Um, I know he's going to be great in whatever positions he strives for because I've watched him do it. And like Chuck Charles said, the uh, just having him lead by example is huge. I know I've called him lots of times over my life to say, what do I do? I don't know what to do, help me. <laughs> and he's always right there um, just to give me the words of wisdom or to let me cry on his shoulder or whatever it is that I needed in that moment, he was able to give to me and help me strengthen my own walk with uh, Christ. So I believe that he can do whatever he and the Lord wills him to be able to do. So thank you. Thank you. Beautiful to see you. I guess I can go next. My name is Anthony Thompson. I'm here in Detroit, Michigan, um, media director for the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. And that's exactly where I, I found the honor and the privilege of meeting Pastor Pope. I met Pastor Polk and Lady Polk well over 20 years ago when they relocated and joined us at Mount Zion. From that first interaction, Pastor Polk definitely became a mentor. He became a brother. And certainly he became someone that I deeply admired. I admired him for his compassion for people. I admired him for his servant's heart. Um, he never told us or taught us anything that uh, would be of any type of harm to us. Uh, because of his leadership skills and his dedication, not only to his family, but also to his ministry and to Pastor Jones, Pastor decided to appoint him as our men's ministry um, leader. And from there, we met every single month. Sometimes we even met at uh, Pastor Pope's home. Uh, we would watch movies and just interact with him to see the, uh, the, the, the Charles Pope that's outside of the church. And um, I'm glad that I'm, I've been able to stay in touch with Pastor Pope after he, you know, relocated back to Mississippi. Um, it, was hurt, it, was, uh, it was hurtful to see him leave because we all had that camaraderie of being family and uh, being a brother. But I understood his assignment. I understood why he had to leave. And I certainly applaud him for taking on another challenge, but just like any other uh, God sent pastor, Pastor Polk has God riding right along with him through all the challenges that he's faced and had to have dealt with throughout these last few years. If you're looking for a dedicated leader who's up for the challenge, my endorsement will always be for my friend and my brother, Charles Polk Jr. I tell him all the time that I certainly miss him and whatever I can do to aid him all these miles away, I'm always one phone call away, and he knows that. So congratulations, my brother, and a job well done. Hi, my name is Lindsay McQueen. Um, I've been a member at St. Luther since 1991, so since birth. Um, and I can say truly that having Pastor Pope as my pastor, especially in my young adult years, has been a blessing. Um, just being a member of his life class where he teaches real life experiences and just makes it relevant, not only to biblical texts, but things that we can apply in real life lessons has helped me get over numerous hurdles and challenges and him being so personable and open to sharing his real life experiences has just allowed us all to build a relationship 
um, with him, especially the youth. So if you're looking for someone that's very selfless and, and just oriented in people and wanting to see the growth in people, then our pastor is definitely the man for the job. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Sydney Polk. I am the granddaughter of Pastor Polk. And I would say when it comes to being a leader, it's important to not also show that you're dedicated to what you're doing, but also listening to people that you are leading. And when it comes to me and pushing through college and stepping into being a young adult, I would say that he's very much there and he listens to what I say and he listens to what you're going through and he's willing to give advice and steps to move forward so that you can lead through your own struggles and your own situations. So when it comes to being a leader, I feel that he is a really great man for the job because not only will he be motivated and have the strive to keep pushing, but he's willing to care for the people that he's leading. I didn't, I didn't want to cut Coach Bridges off. Um, I'm Keyshawn McLean. I served under Pastor Polk as an associate minister and while out during my time in Jackson. I also relocated here to Columbus, Georgia. And I had the pleasure of growing up in the church when it was led by his father as well. And Pastor Polk has done a profound job as a mentor and a counselor. And he's done an even better job of making sure, like kind of the old St. Luther motto, making everybody feel like there's somebody. And he has a great job of unifying all generations within the church. And he's done a great job of being energized and just engaged with every service that we have at the church, always trying to make, get everyone involved in some type of way. And he's just doing a great job of equipping us to just be ready to do the same in our communities. And so I've definitely enjoyed serving under him and I miss him, I miss everybody back home in Jackson. It's just been a pleasure, and I'm wishing him the best in this election. Good evening. I'm Mother Bertha Ellis, and I'm a proud member of St. Luther Missionary Baptist Church under the anointed and powerful spirit-led leadership of Charles Pope Jr. And I'm I'm a the president of the Mother's Board and being an auxiliary member, I am so proud of that he's not a stand back pastor. He's very involved with the membership, membership of his church and anything, anytime we wanna to talk to him about anything, he's there to listen. And not, he doesn't do all the talking either. He listens to what we have to say. So I know that he is an excellent leader. He's already proven himself to us but we want others to know just how powerful he really is because he's definitely a leader ordained and sent by God. I am I am Deacon Willis Bridges. I serve on the De Deacon Ministry at St. Luther. Outside of St. Luther, I've been really known as a coach for 38 years. And so when I think about Pastor Charles Pope, I think of him as being a, a coach and St. Luther being the team. And as a coach, you have to have, you have to be strategically in decisions and things that you do. You have to know how to organize. You know, have to know how to structure things. And I have seen Pastor Pope in, in those areas do that very, very well. And also you have so many different people that you have different attitudes, you have um, different people with different mindset, different skill levels. 
And I've seen him be able to, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, to place people in key positions and, and place peoples in a position of leadership. So that tells me that that he's a he's a great coach. And also what a coach has to do is a coach has to lead by example. And Pastor Charles Pope has shown me so many times that um, he's willing to to stand out front. He's willing to to lead by example in everything that he do. Uh, so I just want to say that uh, as a as a coach, um, and as I look at him as a pastor, um, he ha he's a he's a great great coach, and um, I'm just glad to be on on his team. And I love him, and I think he'll do a great job. Hello, everybody. I'm Alden Brooks. I'm actually a serving as a deacon at St. Luther Missionary Baptist Church, as well as co-chair of the trustee board. And my connection with pastor is as a brother. Although we, although we don't share the same blood, our hearts are connected, uh, actually knitted together. Uh, that doesn't mean that we always agree or see things the same. But as a brother, he can always be counted on. And I do love him because of his giving heart. Thank you. Joanna, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm great. I'm trying to work this computer. Okay, you're let fine. me. You're fine. You're yeah. on. Okay. I'm Joanna Marshall, a member of St. Luther Missionary Baptist Church. I've been there a long time. Um, I love uh -huh. Pastor Charles Polk and his wife, First Lady Jackie. Um, I think Pastor would make an excellent moderator of Jackson District. Missionary Baptist Association. He is very informative. I mean, he's going to let you know some things that that you need to do, or some things you may not already know. I like the growth that um, that he has brought to the church. Uh, one thing I can think of is the different ways you can pay your tithes and your offering. I think that we, that's wonderful that he's doing that. He keeps us connected uh, by doing family gatherings at the uh, Family Life Center. I think that's wonderful. And he's not just telling us about it. He's involved in it as well. So I think that's just speaks of a lot about him and what he's doing. Um, he's a natural leader. He's a natural leader. And I will be there to vote for him on October 30th. Thank you. I think, did you cover everybody? I think we did. Um, ah, I see our daughter, Rhonda. I see her name on there. Yeah. Rhonda, you still on? Watch, she walked away and she's going to come back and fuss. Well, <clears throat> while she's... Ah! I see a new face. <laughs> are, are you looking at me, First Lady? Yes, sir. I am. All right. All right. I just wanted to make sure I was well in turn. Uh, greetings, everyone. Just quickly here. My name is Ron Huddleston, and I am the co-chair of the Deacons Ministry at the wonderful St. Luther Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, proud to be in place and serving. And since this is about my pastor, I say my pastor first, my fraternity brother. 
One thing I can surely say about Pastor Polk, I'm sorry, fraternity, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Greatest <laughs> uh, my pastor, my pastor, um, Pastor Polk, I think one thing that sticks out about Pastor Polk, the word that comes to mind as far as his leadership ability, as well as just an overall characteristic, is perseverance. Perseverance. He just won't stop. Um, <laughs> Pastor Polk has continued with the vision that has been given to him in correlation that all with the Lord, that the Lord has had going on at St. Luther Missionary Baptist Church. He's been able to continue in the course of action uh, that the Lord has given him, even in face of many adversities and face of so many challenges. Uh, he has been just stuck to the mission of pressing forward and that is something that I believe that any organization uh, should look well into when it comes to leadership ability. And so he never stops providing and uh, uh, with his services and counseling, he's has um, he's had a wonderful anointing, I believe, to continue with worship, even in the face of a pandemic. St. Luther never dropped the ball or missed the beat by the grace of God as he equipped us to move forward. Uh, our pastor was very persistent in making sure that we were not only persistent, but that we were consistent in doing so. And uh, providing of the worship and word has been such a blessing to the St. Luther Missionary Baptist Church family. And I'm just proud to be on the team uh, with the leader that keeps us moving forward. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Ron. Thank you. Leah, you you had quite an, an impressive gathering here. Yes. I'll tell you, yes. Pastor's not on. I uh, he's going to be blown away. I I tell you, he's he's really going to be blown away. These are uh, so many people that mean so much to him, and um, yeah, he's going to be blown away. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you know, uh, it was all real. It was all real. It was all from their heart. So um, that, that it speaks volume of who he is. Yeah, yeah. Not everybody, you know, is familiar with the Zoom format, et cetera. But nobody yeah. said no. I, I Apparently, you know, because you had so many that are here. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to thank you all. I think Rhonda must have walked away. And so she's going to fuss later, but I have to tell her that um, mommy decided to speak on her behalf. She is our uh, only daughter. She's our firstborn and she's daddy's girl. And so um, we're, we're just, we're just blessed and, and so appreciative of you coming out. So we're going to let God have his way and we're going to be supportive. I can assure you, no matter how this turns out, Pastor is going to be the same guy he is right now, and he's going to be supportive of the National Baptist Convention, the state, and the district. And so we're just praying, God, for great days ahead. Absolutely. All right. I think that's it. I mean, uh, just a, another reminder, election is uh, Monday. Is that Monday? Yes, October 30th at New McRaven Hill Baptist Church in Jackson, Mississippi. And that time is from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. So make sure you go to the polls and put in your vote for Reverend Charles Pope Jr. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thank you, Aaliyah. This has been so nice. Really appreciate it. All right. Have a good one.